Hey guys, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're going to talk about the Hi Feynman HE1000 SEs. Now, admittedly, I've had these for a long time, months and months. And if you've watched some of my other reviews where I've talked about things like the Shit Hell 2 Amp DAC, um, uh, even a gaming controller from Turtle Beach, I use these in examples and reviews as much as I can because I've loved these headphones. I've liked them so much that I put way too much pressure on myself for this review because I don't want to come across as a shill or an advertiser because I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I got no kickbacks. This was sent to me for review, um, but I wasn't expecting to love a headphone uh, this much. Um, in fact, I tend to uh, try to take breaks from it because I review a lot of uh, gaming headsets, which naturally do not sound as good as an audiophile planar magnetic like this. Um, and it makes the others sound so poorly in comparison that I don't want it to cloud my uh, perceptions of those headsets and headphones. So um, this is a special headphone. Obviously the price reflects that. If you're here uh, just from subscribing to the channel, one thank you. But if you're researching if this is gonna be the right headphone from you, you should already know it's $3,500. It's not cheap. This is an audiophile headphone. Um, so we're gonna be focusing on it as such. Now there are a few things I wanna discuss in the beginning before we get into sound quality. And when you open the box, um, it's presented in a nice way. You know, you have the headphones are kind of put in this really nice little liner inside. Um, the three sets of cables are included in the middle, and that'll give you your XLR, your three quarter inch uh, jack, or sorry, your quarter inch jack, and the 3.5 millimeter uh, cable. So you have three different ways of connecting this for what's included in the box. Naturally, you can buy your own cables, um, but it's good to have all the options right away. Uh, aesthetically, this isn't the most pleasing looking cable. Uh, it's kind of a semi-transparent, foggy uh, clear coat, if you will. It makes kind of a weird texture noise to it. Uh, but sound quality wise, I was still really happy with it. I didn't feel like I had to upgrade because I was missing something. Um, and I didn't have any static issues or anything with movement either. On that note, uh, just so I don't forget, there's another uh, cool feature that they did with the HE1000 SEs and they put it at a 10 degree uh, angle the jacks for your audio cables by doing that it's not pointing straight down at your shoulder some headphones especially depending on the design can put the audio cables pointed straight down at the bottom instead of forward or back um, when you move around sometimes uh, with some headphones you can uh, feel the cable or even the plug sometimes going to your shoulder so i like that it's forward uh, it's a more natural way for the cable to lay it should minimize any impact movement has on your sound quality uh, no distortion, things like that, and no noise transferred into the ear cups. Now you saw the way I was just wearing these. Um, comfort is excellent, so there's a few reasons why. Um, it has a nice clamp force to it. It's very linear, and that's super important because when you buy a $3,500 headphone, you don't want it to fit certain heads uh, much better than others. So small head versus large head. Um, some headphones and headsets or whatever you use, um, they don't have a linear clamp force, which means they have a little bit of give, then you get to here and it's a lot tighter. Uh, you're hitting a, a, a limit to where their headband was designed. And as a result, people with larger heads uh, are often played with much higher pressure. Um, results in discomfort, <clears throat> you know, things like that. So some manufacturers have just said, okay, let's just put a better ear pad on there, um, but they're not fundamentally looking at um, a redesign of the headband. This type of design presents a very natural linear clamp force, so depending on your head size, it should fit you very comfortably. The other nice thing is they have asymmetric ear pads. They're not perfectly flat ear pads. And by being asymmetric, it contours naturally to the shape of your head and ears. In addition, of course, to having full rotation in either direction and a large uh, array of tilt capability. So regardless of what your head size is, um, this should fit extremely well. The ear pads are also extremely deep. The thicker side is over an inch thick, and the more shallow side where it gets a little bit less uh, deep, that's about three quarters of an inch thick. 
So if you like deep ear pads, you don't want to feel your ear touching the driver or the baffle in front of the driver. Um, you don't have to worry about that with this. Um, they are huge. You can still swap the pads. They're not glued on or anything. So if you want to roll pads or either change the sound signature, I guess, or change the way the comfort is and the feel, you can do that. However, um, these leather pads to me have been excellent. Uh, I've had no thought process whatsoever of, of trying to swap these out because I'm really happy with the way they sound out of the box. Um, you do have that, you know, kind of a two-way fabric, if you will. You have your your leather right here and then a softer cloth material that helps with breathability. Um, these are very much open back. Like if I shine my light through it, you can see through it, obviously. Um, the open back helps with a lot of re a lot of things, um, mainly for the sound stage. Uh, but this isn't obviously meant for travel. Between needing to be plugged into something and their size, these things are huge. And the way this is designed, that's not something that um, uh, I guess fits and conforms to your head as uh, tightly as possible. Um, and because they're open back, you're going to hear a lot more noise around you. And if you turn these up, people around you are going to hear your music uh, very clearly. Not the best for travel, but for home use, they're they're designed to give you the best possible music listening experience at home in this price range. So I'm glad I waited to dive into the sound quality part and review this for you guys because and girls, because originally when I got this, my experience with Super Ion headphones was somewhat limited. You know, I'd heard some stuff at a Best Buy or some friends, um, but I never owned a pair uh, to this caliber. Now, uh, by waiting, I was able to go to Can Jam, uh, which is a headphone show, and I was able to listen. I spent a lot of time there, like two days, and I was able to listen to, you know, probably 50 plus headphones for extended periods of time, pick some favorites, spent more time with those, of course. Um, it was really cool to see these there because seeing people's reaction to them when they put them on, most people don't expect this to sound the way they do, and it's all good stuff, but the sound quality is phenomenal. So... We're going to get into all that. Um, I'm going to just cover a couple minor things real quick so um, you're aware of these terms and what they mean. And then we'll get into everything that I love and truly love about these headphones. All right, now before I get into sound quality, which is my favorite part to discuss with these naturally, um, there's a few cool things I want to mention. Um, Planar, there's four general categories of speakers or um, sound production technologies, if you will, for headphones. And if I miss something, I'd love a comment uh, below to let me know that this other cool stuff exists and I'd love to learn more about it. But you have your traditional driver, you know, a 50 millimeter driver, for example, traditional magnet, voice coil, etc., and that moves forward and back. You have planar magnetics, which uses a diaphragm suspended between magnets, uh, very close proximity, and the goal is to have full control over the diaphragm to produce ac sound accurately. We're getting ahead of myself, but that's the way they work. Then you have electrostatic uh, headphones, um, like Stax headphones. They require special amplifiers to work correctly because they're electrically charged. And then you have ribbon headphones, uh, which are another cool technology. They sound very different, but um, the majority of what you see out there um, for mainstream headphones are the traditional driver technology and planar magnetic. I love planar magnetics because they're very versatile. You can plug them into nearly anything. Um, but you get really, really high-end audio quality if it's done right. So there are a few things that Hi-Fi Men has applied either from concepts or experience they've had in other headphone models, um, whether it be higher or lower, uh, they put it into this and it's producing a very transparent sound. So part of that is the whole window uh, shade or window screen, they call it. Um, basically, it, it's as transparent as possible on the back of the ear cup. So the sound coming out of the uh, diaphragm isn't being impacted in any way by the back of the headphone itself. That, again, the goal is to not alter the sound quality in any way. On the inside, if you will, I mentioned that planar magnetics have a diaphragm suspended between magnets. Well, on this model, they call them stealth magnets because if you think of the magnets uh, in a grid or uh, a bunch of rows of magnets uh, surrounding the diaphragm, it, depending on the shape of the magnet, the density, how wide they are, that's effectively putting like a screen or a, a little gate, if you will, in front of the diaphragm. So if I do that in front of my voice, I'm right now hearing reflections coming back from my hand, coming back at me. That's impacting the sound quality. It's not being fully transparent. 
um, and that will produce really odd characteristics almost every time unwanted characteristics to your sound. Um, stealth magnets, their goal is to be as transparent as possible so the sound waves flow freely out um, without extra re reflections, diffractions, things like that. So that's the core philosophy behind this. Um, it translates into a, a ridiculous sound stage. I'll get into the sound quality in a moment, but that's the concept behind it. So they've done a lot of really cool things. It's not just, let's just put a big planar driver in it and crank up the price because it can handle the power and charge it. There's a lot of technology in there to not just have very high power handling and sound quality, but to get the most out of what the diaphragm uh, is capable of producing. So I found as many use cases as I can to use these whenever possible because I absolutely adore the sound these things make. Um, I have ton so many stories I wish I could share in, in this one video without making it too long. But because of how efficient they are, 96 decibels at 35 ohms, you can drive this with damn near anything. Yes, they benefit from a more powerful amp. They open up and you get so much more sound quality or, or um, fullness to what you listen to. You're basically in more control of the headphone. So they benefit from that. But if you plug this into an iPhone, that's using a little lightning to uh, headphone jack, like $10, $15 DAC, um, they still work fine. If you plug this in, I've, I've actually reviewed this with gaming products. That's why I have a little mic mount here for my Antlion mod mic, because this is like cheating. If you use this as the, the best gaming headset on the market, which they can be, um, but they work with a gaming controller. They can plug directly into a computer, but at that point use a real uh, headphone amp. But they're just, they're so versatile because of their sensitivity and the way their natural sound signature is. You don't have to EQ it. You can EQ it to fit or I guess address any nuances with the sound or make it fit your preference more. But they sound incredible out of the box. So regardless of what you plug them into, you're not going to be dissatisfied with the sound. Now my favorite affordable amp DAC with this is the uh, Atom Stack. It's a $200 amp DAC combo. Um, still gets the rich bass and sound stage that I love about these out of them without breaking the bank. And then um, I'm using a Dentafrips Aries 2 DAC with a uh, Monoprice um, THX headphone amp. Very, very clean. Um, about, I think, 1000 or $1,200 all in between the two, somewhere in there. Uh, and that's really, to me, it's been more than enough for these. So with that being said, let's get in to the sound quality because the first thing I noticed when I turned these on and started listening to some music is how good the bass was. Um, there are so many different ways that I've experienced bass lately listening to expensive headphones. And I was looking, you know, when I listened to the Focal Utopias, the IDs, LCD5s, or Odyssey, sorry, LCD5s, um, the Empyreans, they all do bass differently. And when I first heard these, this was before I heard a lot of the other headphones, I wasn't expecting bass to be so uh, well nuanced and full. It's one thing to say it can hit a 60 hertz frequency, no problem, or 30 hertz, no problem. But the, the strength behind that and the control behind that um, just completely changes the dynamics of a song in the best ways possible. Um, music that doesn't have to be bass heavy can still benefit from a very strong bass note that's in full control. It's it's almost damn near flat, but again, it's just that power and fullness behind it that when you turn this thing up, I mean, I can feel my ears moving. It's not just um, because this thing goes down below 10 hertz. It's not just it sounds good. It literally can shake your ears, and that's not through pressure either because these are full open backs. That's just pure sound waves um, and with these giant, giant diaphragms. So um, whether I was listening to electronic music, because I wanted, once you get a taste of that, you know, I'm listening to some some rock and acoustics and stuff, um, jazz, classical, whatever it may be. But once I got a little taste, it's like a, a gateway drug. And I'm like, okay, now I find I want to find what bass tracks I can use to really showcase what this thing does. And it, it never let me down. It, whatever I was listening to, I'm like, oh, I guess it does that. Okay. No, it just, it just kept on going. Um, and that was phenomenal. Um, I guess I'll get into one story uh, after I talk about the other characteristics. But um, yeah, what, regardless of what you're listening to, I found that it was very rich. Uh, it can hit deep if you wanted to, but it's not too punchy uh, or over the top in any way. It can somehow be smooth, yet 
in extreme control of what it's doing. When you get into the mids, they are almost perfectly flat and not flat in a dull, um, laid back, lack of detail kind of way. Flat as in, regardless of what kind of voice you're listening to, I found that um, they sounded like, you know, it is a live performance. I'm right there with the artist and um, it, they're speaking to you as opposed to you're just listening to some music. And their ability is to reproduce vocals so accurately while also layering in, you know, rich guitars, strings, um, you know, whatever it may be. It, it's just, it's very layered, um, very present, but not overdone or overexcited in sound reproduction. Um, so again, extremely versatile. And when you roll that into the highs, which are just like the bass was in control, the the decay or or the ability to control how fast the sound reproduction stops. There's no ringing, if you will. Um, it's just the second it emits a frequency that needs to be played. As soon as that frequency doesn't need to be played anymore or note, it immediately stops. There's no. It's just so precise and tight. Um, the the speeds are insane it's one of the fastest sounding headphones i've ever heard and i did listen to a lot of expensive headphones when i went to cam jam uh, and i'm glad that this is one of my first audiophile headphones i've covered on the channel because it sets the bar really high and after hearing other headphones i can see why i would like listening to some of those um, but at the end of the day if i had to just stick with one this is your summit fi end game level sound quality without getting into you know, the $6,000 so far as, um, or other headphones that are more expensive. So love the control. Um, the big thing is the ability for the HE-1000s, the SEs, to extract so much detail um, out of every song that you play. It is very analytical. Um, it's It can be unforgiving. If you have a low quality audio source, you will know when you listen to it on this, it doesn't hide behind anything. It, if it's coming from the source, it's gonna do whatever it can to play that to you, good or bad. Now, if, if I had one way to describe that capability, it was like, you know, you've always been listening to music on the same two speakers your whole life. And there's a big blanket between you and the speakers. Then all of a sudden one day someone comes and lifts the blanket and it's like everything you've listened to sounds so much more vivid and present and open out of nowhere. I, I, I don't know how else to describe it, but when you listen to these and you listen to a lot of other headphones out there, um, they sound more veiled and, and reserved in comparison. And, but these aren't, again, they're not, they're not sharp. They're not harsh. Um, they don't make any kind of shrieking mids or anything like that. They're just so detailed and so expanded in soundstage because it's, it's like, I don't, you know, when you put on headphones, you can know you have a, an intimate listening experience. And some people say they have a wide sound stage. Uh, it's a fairly closed sound stage. Basically, it sounds like it's come from the center of your head. This kind of changes what you think is possible as far as width of sound stage and how far it can put an instrument. If you're playing Call of Duty, this is a totally off the wall type example, but how far can I pinpoint the footsteps? How much directional accuracy do I have of where the enemy is sneaking up on me? If I'm listening to an orchestra, can I tell not only uh, what kind of instrument, you know, what cello is it? Um, how I can hear the, the bow moving across the strings. Um, it's almost like you hear every little nuance in the sound that, that originally you were okay with not hearing before because you didn't know what you were missing. Um, but it kind of makes you re-listen to a lot of music again because you hear stuff you haven't heard in the past. Um, I've used this demo in examples before on other product reviews, but uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan's Tin Pan Alley, nice long track, uh, blew my mind when I listened to it on this. And as a result, every headphone I demoed at Can Jam, I always played that song because I just wanted to hear the same thing over and over. Um, it's really hard to produce what this thing does at any price point. So um, granted, I... I'll say it. let's let's get towards the end here because I'll I could talk for hours on this and uh, I have with friends. Um, if you were shopping for this price range and you have the ability to audition different headphones, certainly do it. Um, there's there's not one perfect headphone for every single thing out there in the world, so you have to 
basically approach an expensive purchase like this with knowing where the pros and cons are, what are the characteristics of the headphone, and, and is that the right characteristic for you? If you just want really rich, strong, powerful bass, um, the, the LCD5 from Odyssey is obviously a great headphone. Very different, fairly different sound signature. Um, this is analytical and detailed and still has tons of bass. Um, it sounds more present and more wide and open. Um, and I really like that because when I listen to certain music, especially live performances, it just puts you in that moment more. Um, and I've really enjoyed listening to it as a result. I did a huge audio demo uh, at a local store um, about a month or two ago. And it was mainly to demo my Alta Audio um, Alyssa bookshelf speakers, which I, I loved and completely changed what I thought was possible from a bookshelf. My whole focus was like, okay, how can I maximize this demo so people can hear the bookshelves and what they can do? Because it was insane. I brought these not so much as an afterthought because obviously I'm not going to demo headphones to too many people because of COVID. Um, but I, I ended up bringing them. I brought my little $200 amp stack from uh, JDS Labs. And I, whenever I switched over, even though everyone was blown away by the speakers, the, the reaction I got when people put these on and never hearing anything like that before, um, I didn't expect as strong of a reaction as I did from so many people that tried it. Um, and if that tells you anything, I, I don't know how else to, again, explain this well without sounding like I'm pushing something because this isn't for everybody, especially if, you know, the style is not for you. It's very different looking. Um, I love them. I wish I could use them every day, <laughs> but I can't because I have to cover other stuff. But these have just been an absolutely phenomenal uh, headphone. And I, if you have the ability to listen to them, great. And if you don't and you're just trying to take a flyer on something in this price range, I don't see anyone being dissatisfied with the sound. The user reviews are synonymously good. Um, they are very, very positive and you get a lot of similar feedback because of how good these things are. So um, I hope this helped you either with your decision making process or just learning about what audiophile headphones gives you because again, there's just a $300 headphone versus this, the differences are much more noticeable than you think. And yes, you get diminishing returns. You know, you can buy a good $300 headphone um, and it'll sound great. And you can spend $1,000 and $2,000. And when you step up to $3,000, it's like, okay, how much better can it sound? These are very special. These aren't just like, it sounds a little bit better. This is a noticeable sound output difference compared to anything I've heard of in this price range or below. Um, so it's at least it feels like you got a big upgrade by doing it. So that should say something about this model. So um, this review is a long time coming. Thank you for sticking it out to the end. Again, I, I think I put too much pressure on myself for this product because I just love it so much and I didn't know how to convey that. Um, but I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We have um, I'll be reviewing the amp deck I mentioned earlier from Denifrips um, and the Monoprice one. Uh, among other many other products that have come in recently. So um, building a new studio soon. That'll be done this summer. So expect a lot more content later. Um, thank you all so much for the support. Part of the move is because of you guys and girls. So with that being said, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.